This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a bit of planner, Camp Power, and Bill Component. Yo, what's up? We are now at Ion Didal. I'm gonna do a range test of this Polestar 3 long range dual motor. So, if you watched previous episode, I had problems with the car. It went to the limp mode with reduced power. Suddenly, the next day, it was okay. Sorry for my not so good voice. I had quite terrible fever yesterday. Today, it is better. And I'm actually supposed to return this car today. And I want to get a range test done because I was sick most of the time when I had this car, so I didn't test it to the max. But then I booked another Polestar 3 in one and a half weeks, but that's the performance. So it will be useful to try to uh, compare now how the long range is in efficiency, or well, consumption versus performance. Well, however, this is like, a, I don't remember what it's called again, but it's a special edition where you have the yellow, or I don't know, orange, the gold, golden brake calipers. Yeah, so yeah, you see here, Pulsar 3. Uh, since also I have limited time, I will not measure the whole battery capacity. I will do that with the performance instead. But at least when I did 1000 km challenge, and I need to recheck my numbers, it was roughly 105 kilowatt hour net capacity. So, we have nice weather today. Car has been charging 95%, doesn't matter too much. 19 degrees Celsius, wow. So, here's the thing. We're not going to do the regular route because of limited time. So, over here now, we are at uh, Dahl. We'll just drive over to Nebenes and then back again, and then over to Hewisata and back again. So that's roughly, a, I'm not sure how much, 30, 40 kilometer loop. So that should be good enough to get an impression of the consumption. So when it comes to uh, trip meter, even though this is a Chinese car, okay, nice, no, a Swedish car, we actually have proper trip meter here. Let's go to the trip meter. And we have a bunch of stuff here since last charge. Uh, probably used uh, since last reset. I can reset this. Wait, how do I? Oh, okay, you get lots of information here. Yeah, and then there's a reset button there. But I'm gonna show you. Suddenly, the car is in English. Yeah, that's also weird because previously, wait, wait, where is it again? When I did the 1000 kilometer challenge, I could not switch language, but suddenly it worked again. It's, it's like, this car is so moody, like my wife, you know? I would go here to language and it would not switch, but suddenly now it worked. So, okay, whatever, as long as you're working, then no problem, all right? And then when it comes to, yeah, another thing. Uh, we go to settings here, drive. So creep is on, ESC, okay, la la la. Yeah, this defaults to range mode every time we start driving. Even though we, if you set it to performance, it will reset. But we're gonna use range mode. Doesn't matter, right? Well, we're on the move. We're doing the 120 test first. We have to cruise 123 to match 120 GPS speed. Well, it jumps a bit up and down, but it should be 120. Yeah. So, like I said, again, uh, 19 degrees Celsius. So that's nice weather. So consumption should be okay, right? Or at least good condition for consumption. Now we have auto steer active here. It's doing an okay job, actually. Okay, we have some traffic here. So that messes up the test slightly. And since this is a, a fairly short loop, then it's also more affected by it. But I try to make it as even as possible. And for a 1 million new car, 100,000 euro car, then you expect the comfort to be good, right? Well, it is really good. We have uh, air suspension and also soundproofing. Uh, well, it seems to be above average. Now we have a bit of headwind and uh, I can hear some wind noise. But overall, it feels to be uh, like a, a quiet car. But I haven't done the regular uh, acceleration noise test, so I'll do that with the performance. Should be close enough, right? Uh, one thing I'm missing though is that uh, we have glass roof here, but there's no way to dim it or you know, make it diffused like many other premium cars, right? Or I'm not sure what I should call this. Uh, it's definitely not poor man's car, but I mean, even uh, ID7, which is uh, almost half the price, has some kind of roof dimming. But I mean, there's some already some tinting here, so now with a strong sun in Norway, lol then I don't feel the heat from above at least. All right, almost done with the loop now. And let's see, it's yeah, a little bit over 30 kilometers. And the, 
the problem with the short loop is that uh, the turnaround points they are naturally slow and that means that the average speed will be lower and the consumption is actually lower versus if we did a longer loop like 100 kilometer loop right all right the distance was 31 kilometer this car underreports distance by one percent that means that the consumption is one percent lower so 260 watt hour per kilometer well I think in the longer loop it might be 270, but it was still not that high. All right, let's try the 90 test then. Okay, 90 test, going at 93 on the speed though. Seems like right now we don't have that much traffic. That's good. And yeah, the previous one was fairly clean. There were a few cars in front, but not that much. Let's test the sound system. This car has Bowers and Wilkin speakers. Should be good, right? Unfortunately, I cannot play USB stick here. But I found uh, this uh, playlist on uh, Spotify that has some of the songs I used in the past. Oh, nice deep bass. I like it. High-end system, they have really deep bass without going overwhelming. Uh, one weird thing is that I cannot adjust the volume on the steering wheel. I have to only use the knob on the center console. That feature has not been implemented yet. Okay, uh, next song. Okay, they have the Banta Black. Okay, gonna skip parts of it. Oh, no, okay. Uh, since I'm using Bluetooth and I cannot skip within the car screen, I have to use my phone. I don't want to do that. But also, I'm not sure how the compression is over the Bluetooth. But it should be good bitrate, right? Wow, it's just high detail without going over crisp, you know what I mean? Sounds really good. And you can toss any type of music on this system. It will just deal with it in an awesome way. Wow. How loud does it go? Whoa, I, you could just crank it up and it plays clear, punchy, no clipping, no distortion, at least not that much. Okay, let me see, there was one song, one more I wanted to listen to. There, this. Yeah, here, another high... High pitch voice from this guy is just pleasant to listen to. Not over crisp. Just very natural. And the bass is just well balanced. It's not too loud like some other systems. And it's also very linear. I couldn't hear many uh, volume differences between different tones in the bass. Ugh, it is so good. It is really good. Wow, okay, crack it again. Okay, the, the car is a bit boat when you go in the roundabouts. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is, like a big fat SUV. But okay, back to the sound system again. Well, unfortunately, I, I was not able to test it with my, the regular sound files, but uh, uh, from uh, the impression from these uh, songs is good. I probably rated 9 out of 10. Still feel like some of the other systems, they had slightly more punch, especially the Kef reference. But this is top notch, top notch. Man, it seems like the more expensive the car is, the more bing bing it has. Piano black here, and this trim here tends to reflect in my face. 
and there will be other sides of the car that also reflects here also there's a, almost at any angle you will get some reflection in your face the cruise control stock here works similar as Tesla you push it down to enable it but then you set a new speed and then you can go five up five down here and then press and hold to change but uh, unlike Tesla Tesla you push it up to disable cruise control autopilot here you push it down to disable it and you want to recall that speed you have to push and hold for a couple of seconds and then you recall it okay and the 90 test we consume 185 watt hour per kilometer now in this test because the speed is lower then we are less affected by the turnaround points even though it's a short loop but 185 watt hour per kilometer okay correct that it's supposed to be 183 i think that is high man i think even the bmw ix was more efficient maybe around 170 yeah i have to check are well, we topping up at Ionti? Let me see what kind of speed we get here. I mean, it's a big battery, right? And it's 400 volt. Wait, we don't see any volts and amps here. But, uh, well, okay. I think the battery should be at okay temperature, maybe around 20 degrees Celsius. So 51 kilo. Yeah, if it was warmer in the battery, then we should get even higher speed from what I remember. But this is acceptable speed. Okay, so consumption in the Polestar is roughly on par with the other bigger premium car, right? But the iX I tested in summer, that was uh, the smaller battery. But the consumption was a bit lower there. And the Model X yeah, was also roughly the same, but the high speed was better, maybe because of drag coefficient. But it was on winter tires, the Model X. But uh, my impression after testing this car is that it seems to be uh, not the most efficient car out there, but it's not super thirsty like Hongxi. But uh, with bit big battery, you can still get good range. I also noticed that when I did 1,000 km challenge, you can go quite far, almost to Weibach, almost 400 km in one run on motorway at night. However, when we talk about these big cars, some of the cars, they are big external size, right? Like this car. But then the, uh, the interior space, I measured it in the banana box test, was actually not that great. It was actually worse than the Model Y or... Uh, let's say Ionic 5, right? Or, or ID4. So, well, at least here you get the comfort of the premiumness with a good seat, the, the, the air suspension, and uh, in general, like a big car, you get, you get all the nice features, the good stereo. But just keep in mind that it actually doesn't have that great use, utilizable space. So if space is important for you, then maybe you should consider another car. But if comfort, is important and you just want something different than all the freaking Model Ys on the road, then this is a good choice. When it comes to software, I have to be honest, brutally honest, uh, it feels unfinished. It lacks many features that you have in most other cars that are sold now, you know, production cars. Uh, and it is also kind of glitchy and buggy. So, yeah, I'm just tossing out all I know about this car and then it's up to you to decide whether you want it or not. But I mean, it's not like, don't buy, you know, like Stellantis or what was it again, Tata. It's not that bad. So anyway, I think that's going to be for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.